Oh! Hello and welcome to the world's smallest YouTube kitchen. I am the awful chef and I want to eat something, so I better cook something. Tonight it's steak cooked in butter. Oh, what a horrible thought. Nobody likes that. Along with some potatoes, a uh, kind of Caesary salad, and we're actually making steak au poivre, a big one. Typically, steak au poivre is a small steak covered in a very wonderful sauce. We are making a big steak highlighted by a wonderful sauce. So, first things first, potatoes. And I have to get a better camera. Yellow potatoes cut in half, cut in slices, oil, vinegar, salt, pepper. And literally magic in about half an hour. Yeah, food can be that easy. Salad dressing. This time I broke the yolk. So what we have here, entirely invisible to my poor camera, is an egg yolk, a clove of garlic minced finely, not pressed, not smashed, but minced finely, and some olive oil. A little salt, if I can get any to come out, there it is, a little pepper. And some red wine vinegar. And those of you who are followers of the show know that our magic ingredient is a French style mustard. The trick on this is not using too much. This is a fat sauce for lettuce. I don't know how many Bible jokes you've read, but God created salad and man put fat on it. So, a little bit of French style mustard there. That's actually a bit excessive for what we're doing. But literally, voila! Salad dressing. Quite a wonderful one, in fact. You'll notice I have not made the same salad dressing twice on this channel. So here is exactly what you would expect of a yellow, let's see, egg yolk with garlic. Oil, vinegar, and very yellow French mustard. And because I have a very limited audience, mm, that actually needs more oil to suit my audience. My tastes say it's perfect. But I do not rule the world. So, a little more oil, and voila! Mm. A wonderful salad dressing, Cousin of Caesar, that I will set aside and be right back. Watch my back! You'll be having that with a salad! The romaine was not ideal tonight, so I had to soak it in very cold water, and I will have to spin it dry, thus reviving the salad, or pardon me, the lettuce, that's been in my refrigerator for a bit too long. Yeah, I don't imagine anybody ever suffers that. So I will take care of that while the meat rests. 
I realize I'm on YouTube and we all have a very limited attention span. So, the exciting part. Steak au poivre. Okay, I'm going to need some cream. Yes, my amazing cinematography skills. Look at my hand. Well, you can see that I wear a cheap watch, too. So, in the pan, I have butter melting. But that's not the big sexy thing. A little oil will incur that. Keep it from burning. In fact, that actually needs to be up a little bit, which is not something you hear me say very often. Our magic today is like the other sexy steak show, the steak. One cannot make a good steak. One can only trust in God that he has given us one. You can, however, highlight the flavors. The steak was taken out of the big box store, vacuum packed and frozen for a period of months, thawed, rinsed, salted, and then covered in black pepper approximately two days ago. And it has been drying and creating a magnificent crust in the refrigerator. Yes, I have effectively cured the outer layer of the steak. Yes, I do occasionally wash my hands. I will remind you that I'm in a very limited audience. I cook for two people, and so um, I taste freely. It is a luxury. If you are cooking for more than someone you spend the night with, use a spoon. I, however, am doing a steak cooked in butter. Oh, that doesn't look wonderful. Butter, butter. I can't tell you how wonderful that smells. And now the magic. I have to watch the clock. The steak will cook for three minutes per side. But it is not yet time. Once the minute hand clicks, it will be time to start cooking the steak and monitor it very closely. Three minutes per side will not give you medium rare. It will give you beef sushi, which is something we like in this house. So you will have to watch me for approximately 45 seconds. Now steak au poivre is made with cognac, white wine, Heavy cream. Oh, 47. So. Minute hand clicked. Yes, I'm obsessive about cleaning as I cook. So. That will be there for three minutes. And then it will be three minutes on the other side. And then we will make a sauce with white wine, cognac, heavy cream, beef stock. Yes, I'm sorry. We all have that industrialized um, taste. Yeah, that's the interesting thing about cooking in America is that we all have tastes that are motivated frequently more by chemical factories than by foodstuffs. I can make a wonderful sauce that will taste nothing like McDonald's hamburgers. And nobody will like it. Yep. Exciting part of cooking. Waiting for food to brown. 48. Oh, we have a very good crust on that. It's not sticking to the pan at all. But the pan is definitely too hot. 
do a little bit better than that. So, um, yeah. Steak, salad, potatoes. It all comes down to this. Ah, my oven formed. The potatoes. You throw them in the oven, you bake them. When they're cooked but not brown, you broil them. Put a crust on them. Everybody loves it. 49. Okay, we are preparing for beef sushi. So, as with everything else, the important part is the exit plate. Something with sides would be a good idea because the meat will let out juices. Yes, we have to do everything real time. So at this point, if you have a date, you should be talking glibly about the weather or whatever. Oh, 50. Oh my heavens, that is beautiful. And this is very important that your date like her beef very rare. Because three minutes aside will give you very, very rare beef, which is what my date likes. It's important to cook for your audience. Food is very personal and the tastes are very um, individual. To say the least. Yes, it does get a little claustrophobic in here. My kitchen is basically a galley. Okay, the steak is stuck to the pan, which is not bad. Do not be worried. The juices and everything wonderful under there are caramelizing. And when it lets go, I will know that it has created a proper crust. So yes, hopefully I will, I don't know, receive some sort of sponsorship and suddenly get a gigantic new kitchen to cook in. But fortunately for now, I cook for two people, so this is big enough. Fifty-one. So, two more minutes, and then we have to do something fun. Hey, I don't imagine you ever heard of a funky chicken, did you? You know, when I was young, that was kind of a big thing, and I'm just too self-conscious to do that on YouTube. Sorry, guys, no funky chicken while I wait for the steak to cook. I've been trying to talk Mrs. Chef into helping me with these comments. 52. One more minute. Yeah, it's nearly 6 o'clock. But she's too busy being nervous. I want her to do that Howard's mother thing, you know. Boone has a tremendous sense of humor. She's one of the reasons I'm called the awful chef. Okay, the steak is still sticking to the bottom. Okay, there we go. You'll see smoke. Yes. Oh, 53. So I'm now turning the steak on its side. Put a sear on there. Oh, we have a magnificent sear on this meat. I would love to lift the pan up to you to show you, but it just isn't practical. Yes, I did just turn off the heat. There's plenty of heat in the pan and the fat for the slight amount of searing that's required now. Okay, spinning the steak.
So yes, this was part of a family pack at a major discount food source. Or pardon me, big box store since their prices are not at all discount. And there we are. What appears to be a very badly overcooked steak. But it's not. It is very crusted, however. And that is magnificent. So, au poivre. What makes a steak au poivre? Ooh, a little less smoke, perhaps. Au poivre is basically a fat sauce created out of beef fat, of which we have plenty. A little bit of butter. Notice the um, vacuum cork on my white wine. We don't go through white wine that quickly. So the vacuum cork is a very good investment for us. So, butter and white wine, what a terrible start. Let's put this back on the heat and get some of this caramelization. And see what we can do about eliminating some of that alcohol. But of course I've been smart enough to turn off the stove. For those of you who are wondering, yes, everything is live. Welcome to live TV in my galley-sized YouTube kitchen. So, the wine is bubbling. Let's throw in some more spooze. How about some brandy to go with that? The brandy, of course, adds hints of sweetness that don't exist in the white wine. In terms of a vacuum cork, uh, brandy doesn't last that long here. Ah, I hope you enjoyed a view of my microwave. So yes, the sauce is properly reducing. All that wonderful meat sauce, or meat juice, and meat fawn is joining the sweet cognac and the white wine that acts almost as a, oh, for lack of a better term, a carrier. Ah, this is thickening nicely. Let me show you what the beginnings of a very good pan sauce look like without pouring it all over my keyboard. There we go, you're getting a little. They're just basically brown goo, well, thin stuff. It's picking up the meat nicely and distributing very well. The alcohol is boiling off as you can hear. And C. Okay, let's turn that off because we've obviously gotten rid of the alcohol. And let's make it evil. Heavy cream. Okay. What I have now is a wonderful, very fatty sauce for steak. It is thin. We can fix that by simply cooking it down or adding Wondra brand flour thickener. Let's see how this came out. Mm. Yeah. 
that tastes like white wine, cognac, heavy cream, and a little butter. And some dead animal fat. What that means in English is that even though that's a wonderful sauce, it won't do. Because it does not have any of the chemical beef flavor we are used to. So, a little beef stock, or in this case, beef stock concentrate. That is the flavor we are used to as Americans. Okay, now the color of the sauce is changing. It is becoming darker brown and more consistent with what we expect from a sauce. Mm -hmm. Now that is a beef flavored sauce. And it actually does need some thickening. Ah, there we are. The Magic Wondra. My wife gets so mad at me for using this. How much do I use? More than I think I need. And if you want to be a really five-star restaurant, and dried parsley flakes. As many of the Asian chefs say, more green is more good. cream sauce with green flakes in it. I know, doesn't that sound delightful? It actually is. You would pay top dollar at a decent restaurant to have this poured over your steak. Mm. Oh my heavens. The taste is wonderful. Do not hate the sausage making process if you enjoy the sausage. That does need a little more butter though. Just to finish it off. So that's it. The potatoes will be ready in about 10 minutes. The steak is resting quite comfortably. The sauce is ready and will remain quite nicely warm. Oh, quite nicely. Mm. That's good. The salad, of course, is ready. I will spin the lettuce dry. The um, dressing, egg yolk, minced garlic, olive oil, salt, pepper, red wine vinegar, and a hint of French mustard. So, welcome to the big sexy steak date night show. Here's our star. One of the um, big box stores. Oh! I've got some juice. Steaks. What I put in the freezer a few months ago. 
and kept safe. So I'm the awful chef. I'm going to eat very nicely tonight. Um, you're welcome to follow suit. Please subscribe. I need every subscriber. I need every like. I need everything. This is social media. We must be social. Thank you. Goodbye.